Perfect. Yeah. yeah, sorry for the glitch, guys. Um, hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good evening, depending where you are. I'm very excited to speak up here at uh, uh, Chaos Community Session about our journey to Chaos Mesh. Thanks to Mila for organizing this and bringing us together. I'm Anurag Parivar, and I'm working with Adobe from past 15 years. Uh, currently, I'm working on a cloud foundation platform called as Ethos. And it, in today's session, I will be talking about our journey uh, to, to Chaos and why we have selected Chaos Mass for making our services and platform more resilient. And what's coming next for us? What all other features that in future we are going to integrate? So let's start at very high level, um, the services at Adobe. So there are three Adobe Cloud, Document Cloud, Creative Cloud, and Experience Cloud. Um, these clouds are having various products and services. These product services are making use of several platforms like data platform, content platform, sensei, machine learning platforms, and many more. These product services, uh, all these services, product services and the platform services are using Ethos, which is our cloud foundation platform. Ethos itself has clusters running on AWS, Azure, as well as in data centers. Just to give you the scale uh, for Ethos specifically, uh, we are currently having more than 200 clusters. Majority of them are multi-tenants. And th there are around 26K namespaces, which are running around 150K workload at any point of time. On an average, you say there are around 3 million containers running per day and around 800 builds per day, that's what we are building. And there are around 200 deployments happening using our CI/CD tools. Now let's take a deep look at, at Ethos. So Ethos is basically delivering the containerized application to the cloud. It's doing by incorporating 12 factor principles. The platform is cloud agnostic. The main purpose of pl platform, in addition to the obviously the management of the Kubernetes cluster, is handling the cross-cutting concerns. So for example, we have Blast-based images that the developer uses to build their own images. We have out-of-box code generation and bootstrapping. Around 70% of our services are Java-based. So we offer frameworks and libraries to do uh, things with like you know connectivity between other Adobe services, logging, validations, and things like that. We also offer KTS namespace provisioning, bootstrapping, and securing network policies, quota limitations, and we have uh, CICD solutions as well, the multiple one. Observability and platform or, uh, and monitoring are the part of the platform itself. And we do have multiple tools like we call it as EVA, like Ethos, Virtual Assistant, and uh, cost efficiency tools, and many more. Now, let's talk about very high level, you know, the journey that uh, Ethos in general had. Um, so we started, uh, Ethos started around 2015. Um, 2015, uh, our clusters were running on Mesos DCOS with our homegrown tools that we have uh, written from scratch. Uh, we provided abstraction to developer to deploy their services using configuration in cloud and technology agnostic way. In 2020, we migrated our all of our clusters to Kubernetes with minimum impact on the services. Uh, with this move, obviously, now we can use community-driven tools and frameworks rather than our homegrown tools, which only we were maintaining. Now. When we talk about chaos, so these, these are the objective that we have in our mind. So building a structural approach for injecting those faults rather than following any manual process or anything like that. And then in continuous in, uh, chaos, because once you do the chaos, it's always good to integrate with your pipeline, the deployment pipeline, and follow the industry best practices. And obviously do the recommendations, you know, in this scenario, this is what we should do and uh, something like that. With the outcomes, um, obviously this will, the, the goal is obviously to prevent outages. 
and if even in case there is something come out this happens uh, the blast radius of that impact should be as as minimum as possible and this so basically proactively you are, we are trying we will trying to improve the resiliency um, of the application and strengthening the system integrity because all micro systems are uh, interacting with so many other systems not just the infra itself now let's talk about why chaos mesh. Um, when we started, uh, that I will cover soon, but when we started, obviously CNCF, uh, uh, chaos mesh was CNCF sandbox project at that point of time. Um, and, but now it's even used to the incubated uh, level. And then obviously it's open source community driven um, and Kubernetes centric, that is what we were looking for. Um, when we export a couple of other tools as well, and easy to integrate, obviously. There's only, as we all know, right? There's a, only minimum component is, is being required. So integration is quite easy. And having the rich features which we were looking for, and obviously the upcoming one as well. Let's talk about our journey to chaos, like when we started uh, in general the chaos. So in the mid of 2020, around August, September time frame is where when we thought, okay, it's very uh, much required to have. Uh, to provide, because as I said, it was is a platform, collaborative platform. So how we can uh, enable something at platform level itself so that all the tenants which are running on our clusters, they can make best use of the kiosk part as well, make their systems more and more resilient. And that's where when we started, we explored, as I said, we explored a couple of tools and decided to go with, uh, with kiosk mesh. Um, in March, we integrated uh, the very first GA of Chaos Mass. And, and then um, in between also, we have done a uh, couple of uh, more releases as, as in like May, May time frame. This, is, this was the time frame when uh, we started onboarding our uh, some Lighthouse clients. Lighthouse means the clients which can try it out you know, so that um, they can give us some feedback uh, and we can also learn because it, it, everything was new for us as well. Right? So we were also learning how things are working uh, under the hood, uh, how it works, uh, obviously network and all those are, even the stress on those are all are very, you know, becomes very crucial, uh, just not from, from the execution perspective but under the hood also you have to understand from this perspective, you know, how things are working. Um, and that's what we, we so that learning also started and the Lighthouse onboarding also started. So clients started using uh, uh, the Chaos Mess. We enabled our, our on few of the, our clusters where basically their services were deployed and that's how we started. And then there was in between, we, we, we were thinking, I clearly remember in August 2021, we released, uh, Chaos Mess actually released uh, 2.0, correct. Um, but due to some other security concerns and some other things, we this release get a bit delayed for us to integrate it to, uh, to basically to take us to 2.0. And then we recently just updated to 2.1.4 as well, and which, which is obviously giving us quite many, you know, uh, enhancement features like even HA support and things like that in Kiosk control. Yeah, and so let, now let's talk about what are the features from Chaos Mesh which we have enabled. I would say. So uh, till now, uh, three main vertical, the pod chaos one, network chaos, and the stress chaos. I'm sure maybe Chaos Mesh team might be thinking at this point of time, why only these three when there are so many, correct? And I will definitely cover to that and we are even having plan to integrate more and more, but this is how we started. You, know, you start from somewhere, okay, these are the minimum. To, to start with and then uh, take it forward, integrate more and more uh, rich features with Chaos Mesh has. But till now, these are the only one um, which is being enabled for our clients. And we are actually controlling this all, all through our back functionality of Kubernetes. During this journey, obviously we face a uh, few challenges. Few we have resolved, few are still open. Um, so name space level restriction. This, I know earlier, uh, Chaos Mesh was not having that auth feature and at that point of time, uh, we even at even at that point of time itself, we were having one more level of requirement of you know putting uh, name space level restriction. Um, I know Chaos Mesh has integrated auth part as well, and obviously we are using that that under the hood. Um, but we were having a, even having a requirement of like chaos whenever we are injecting chaos for a particular name space, 
only the parts for that particular namespace where you are really creating those objects is it should be impacted. Even if you have access to other namespaces, suppose namespace one, namespace two, namespace three, I have access to all those three, but when I'm creating a your suppose pod kiosk resource in, in one, I should be able to just impact the uh, uh, resources only in N1, not in N2 and N3, something like that. So that we have uh, handled through OPA policies. Um, and the big CRD that has come with obviously with 2.0.2 um, release, I think so. Uh, where this big CRD came into picture, this uh, workflow notes, as we all know. And uh, because of big CRD, unfortunately, in our um, Kubernetes infra release that we do um, in the cycle, we are only using kubectl apply. We are not using create or replace, uh, which is being required when we really have to apply a big CRD. So that is still an open issue for us and we will be definitely working on those to resolve soon. As, as I was saying, you know, when we have um, given it to our Lighthouse clients, so there was around seven services, I will say, they tried it out, uh, the chaos mess. And when, they were, when we were collecting the feedbacks and all we found around, they were able to find out around 60 uh, residencies uh, area to improve on. And as mentioned over here, like, you know, the alerts itself was missing, uh, service goes down, even there's some external endpoint post is, is down, like something that is, they have dependence on that is, if that is down, the service itself is down. And many more, uh, like mentioned over here. So those are the others, uh, I would say the uh, very good results that we got from just handful of the services. Now what next? Um, so we, as, as I said earlier, our, our objective is to, to integrate with, uh, with the continuous delivery part. So then we have multiple uh, track on that as well. For few, we have integrated for few, the work is still in progress. And as soon as this uh, integration of, uh, so sorry, 2.2 release will happen, we will definitely uh, planning to integrate that. And from the feature perspective, I will say that DNS chaos is what we are anyway enabling with our 2.1.4 release, which I was showing it earlier, that we are enabling uh, DNS chaos. But HTTP chaos, as I think um, most of us, we know this is what we are still, you know, waiting for uh, that, that work to, to be done so that we can enable it for, to our uh, end users. And JVM chaos, obviously we all know the power of JVM, uh, which you guys have put it up. Uh, so we will definitely want to integrate that as well and enable workflow feature as I was saying. So, so that challenge, when we will work on that challenge, resolve that issue, we will definitely enable um, the workflow feature as well. And make best use of available metrics, obviously, because there are chaos mass now with especially 2.0, there are so many other work has been done in this area. Few we have explored during 1.2 exploration as well, and sorry, 1.3 exploration as well. And there are a few metrics that we have explored at that point, but I'm sure now there are many more which I was going through and the codes and PRs and all. So that's what I will say at high level. And I will, I definitely want to say thank big thank you to, to the team uh, because whenever I was having any issues, even in investigation that part, on was not clear anything to me. I was always reaching out to you guys, and I think I got always a very prompt response. Yeah, not in in in, in those discussions, but also in the PRs and all. So thank you very much. That's all. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Thank you for using like so many versions of Chaos Smash. We're so glad that you like it. And we hope, we obviously hope that you continue to use it in the future and also bring us all the issues you have. Sure. Um, so okay. um, I think we'll get to the technical updates now. Uh, well, uh, or I if, have it uh, Yeah. I, I need, uh, well, I have a little uh, question I want sure. to ask. Yeah, sure. uh, I, I noticed that uh, you said uh, the e-source, uh, 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 it will control about hundreds of Kubernetes clusters. Uh, so uh, would you have the requirement, uh, or would you have the demand uh, for the uh, chaos experiment uh, about uh, uh, Kubernetes multi-cluster? Uh, for example, you want to inject uh, network chaos, but one side is one 
uh, but, but one side is a workload work running in uh, cluster A, but and another side is running uh, in another Kubernetes cluster. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have, uh, as you said, you know, this sort of thread I have seen even on Slack, and I think there is an even an issue open from someone uh, which is having this sort of requirement. And I think earlier there was also a thread on Slack on the same feature. But as of now, I will say we are not looking for that feature uh, uh, because, uh, yeah, yeah, we are not looking for that feature. I will say um, from that perspective, I will say definitely we are looking for uh, very much to SCTPS support, especially for egress calls. Uh, I think that active discussion is going on, and that is what um, we are looking. But yeah, this is support you know, installing in one cluster and using across cluster is is different. We are not looking as of now. Okay, okay, I, yeah. okay. Uh, I think I got it. Thank you, thank you. No problem. Yeah. A any uh, other question? Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I have no other questions. Thank you. No problem. Um, maybe there are no other questions. Uh, let's start the technical updates. Yep, go ahead. Okay. Okay, let me uh, share my screen. Okay. Wait a moment. Yeah, could you uh, see my uh, screen? Yes, yeah. we can. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jitian, and my uh, GitHub ID is uh, STRL, and uh, I'm the committer of Chaos Mesh, uh, and I will introduce the uh, technical update. Uh, firstly, a uh, special thanks to CNCF. Uh, in the last month, CNCF uh, gave us many computing resources for uh, for help, uh, helping Chaos Mesh build the uh, uh, FSMCI infrastructure, uh, infrastructure uh, including uh, uh, GitHub Action Enterprise Plan and some uh, bare metal X68 and ARM computing resources. Uh, we would properly use these computing resources to speed up test and increase, uh, and increase uh, the test coverage, uh, especially on uh, ARM platform. Uh, and again, uh, thanks, uh, CNCF. Okay, uh, there are so many uh, exciting features and enhancements built up in the uh, last month. Let's uh, just take a look. Uh, the first one, uh, the status check, a uh, status check is uh, the uh, one of the uh, important uh, feature about uh, the integration with applications healthy. Uh, it could detect the health and availability of uh, the application and the provide uh, detailed probe history, uh, histories. When the application goes down, status check could shut down the chaos experiment uh, uh, with, uh, yeah, uh, with workflow. Uh, that's very cool. And uh, currently we support the uh, use of HTTP as a common way to uh, detect uh, application health. And uh, you could use chaos mesh workflow to uh, orchestrate uh, status check with other uh, chaos experiments uh, in serial or parallel uh, as continuously health check or a uh, synchronized health check like a uh, like, uh, uh, assertion. Okay, uh, next uh, is uh, chaos control. Uh, it's about chaos control. Uh, chaos control uh, provides a new command called uh, recover, chaos control recover. Uh, it is the outbound recovery uh, mechan uh, mechanism uh, bypassed the uh, origin, uh, the original reconciler pattern, and uh, and also CRD uh, uh, and also the CRD. Uh, it could be a powerful tool to force recover uh, recover the chaos experiment. Uh, the next uh, time chaos could be. Uh, completely recovered. Uh, that's a little about the uh, uh, detail implement of the time chaos. Uh, time chaos time scale is one of the most fancy things provided by chaos mesh. Uh, it could change the clock, uh, the clock of the process without change the hardware clock. Uh, you could find how we implement it on our block. Uh, but there is a little dirty work when we recover the time scale before. Uh, we set 
uh, uh, we set the time offset to zero. Uh, so we, we think, uh, so, so it looks like that uh, the, the time comes back to normal. Uh, so we think it's, it is uh, recovered. Um, and after this uh, PR merged, uh, we could finally clean up. We, uh, uh, we could finally clean up all we did on the processes. Uh, and this feature also introduced uh, components like uh, the manager of different time chaos, and it could uh, resolve, uh, uh, resolve that uh, we could inject multiple time chaos into one process. Uh, the manager would aggregate, uh, would aggregate that. Uh, the manager would aggregate them. Um, so uh, it is uh, based on more, more other type of uh, chaos, time chaos. And uh, maybe the similar manager pattern of time chaos could also be introduced to uh, other other type of chaos, uh, maybe a great enhancement of managing many chaos experiment overlapped with the same target. Okay, uh, and the next, uh, thanks to our contributor XL Gao uh, he make uh, he makes up the uh, improvement of chaos demon. Uh, this is enhancement comes from the real product, uh, the real production environment in his company. Uh, Chaos demo would not work after the uh, controller runtime restart. Uh, because we uh, only mount the single socket file into the uh, Chaos demo container, uh, which would be invalid after controller runtime restart. So uh, thanks, uh, Exergal. Uh, he contributes uh, this improvement, uh, mounts the directory in this, instead of uh, the single socket file. And he also helped us to change the hard-coded socket file path, uh, make it uh, configurable. And mm, there are also eight merged PR about refine logging, uh, thanks to uh, all of our, our contributors. And there are also uh, several uh, enhancements um, in our machine level chaos injection tools called uh, Chaos P. Uh, it could support direction both for uh, networking partition and it uh, introduces a new type of chaos uh, file attack, uh, which could change the content of a certain file and uh, change the permission. And uh, so on. And Chaos D just released the 1.2 port 0. Uh, 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 yeah, 1.2 port 0 uh, recently. Uh, and, uh, it could be a, a, be a try. And uh, we have released one patch version, uh, 2.1.5 in last month. Uh, this patch version introduces several bug fixes and now it's a recommend, uh, it's now it's a, a recommended version to upgrade. Um, okay. Uh, the next coming release is, <laughs> Uh, 2.2.0, yeah. Um, it will be released in the next several days. Uh, the development is almost finished, and here is a peek of the release note. Uh, almost uh, all the excited features and enhancements will be carried in this uh, minion feature, uh, in this minion version, like the Azure Chaos, uh, Stats Checks, uh, the chaos control recovery, uh, uh, the success, the chaos control recovery command, and uh, also support time chaos for uh, GVM applications uh, and uh, HTTP chaos, uh, client side, client side HTTP calls, or in other words, uh, the HTTP calls for egress traffic, and, and so on. So uh, please keep looking forward to the chaos. 2.2.08 would come out very, very soon. Okay, and at last, I want to uh, talk a little more about the next slide, uh, Chaos Mesh. Uh, first of all, the release cycle of the Chaos Mesh, uh, it's, it's, it's a obvious problem now. Uh, Chaos Mesh is still uh, fresh open source uh, and heavy development. Uh, we, 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 we try to keep going. Uh, uh, keep going on delivering our best products to the users. Uh, I, uh, we have 
provide the documentation about uh, supported release, uh, supported releases, uh, which introduces the release policy and uh, maintains window, uh, maintain new window of uh, chaos, uh, chaos mesh versions uh, when we release uh, with the last release to dot one dot o. Uh, however, the execution of the um, release policy is uh, is not. It's not good as expected. Uh, we we will actually we will um finally release to dot to uh dot o mini version after five months is away after we release to dot o uh two dot one dot o. Uh, that's so much longer than three months is we announced in our document. Um. We must keep delivering our product in a regular pattern. Uh, this is one of the most important things. Uh, with the reference of uh, how Kubernetes releases, we would draft a detailed release cycle, a, a new release cycle document and handbook for release managers in the uh, next several weeks, uh, publish them and the discussion with the community. And finally, we would follow them to build up our next major release uh, yeah, the, the, the 2.3.0 and the children just mentioned that we, we might uh, 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 <laughs> we, we would um, make the uh, the release cycle from three months to two months yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it, it also be the change okay um then back to the exciting new features uh, there are also some um, uh, unfinished features inherited from uh, the 2.2.0 uh, because we have no more time to build it or, or this feature is much complex than we expected. Uh, we, uh, we would keep working on uh, these features and trying to build them in the next mirror, uh, in the next main releases. Uh, for example, uh, the TRS part of uh, HTTP chaos uh, Maybe or or maybe even the TLS chaos for uh the, for networking traffic, uh, and block chaos for uh, injecting uh, delay and uh, like uh return limiting at block device level. Um, the the, the next uh, that, that, that's that's really uh, that's uh, that that's really that relates to my uh last question. Uh, the Kubernetes multi cluster, yeah. The, the multi cluster is also the new direction uh, we are discovering on because uh, many usage of uh, Kubernetes multi cluster will cover uh, will coverage uh, uh, will consider the usage of virus networking. Uh, maybe I think Chaos Mesh could resolve the Chaos injection for multi cluster scenario. And uh, actually, uh, because of the release cycle things, um, uh, what feature should be carried in the, or which feature should be carried in the next major version should also be included uh, as a document. And it requires discussion with community. So uh, what I listed here is just a, a view, a, 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 it's just an overview. Uh, we need all the, our contributors to make chaos mesh better. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you have any good quest, uh, if you have any good idea or uh, suggestions, uh, please feel free to communicate uh, to communication with us. Uh, open this uh, open discussion uh, or issues on GitHub or send a message on our Slack channel. Uh, thanks. That's all. Thanks. I I have finished my presentation. Yeah, hello, Mila. Yes, thank you, Zhiqiang. Uh, so, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to ask before my session begins. Just unmute yourself, or either way. All right. If nobody has any questions to ask for now, um, I'll just get started with community updates to let you guys in on what we have been up to in the past month. 
Um, so Chaos Smash is excited to be part of KubeCon. I believe it's um, in Valencia, Spain this summer, which is happening in two weeks, I think. Um, we have two sessions prepared. One is by Chen Wen, who will be talking about uh, deep diving into Chaos Mesh, making cloud native chaos engineering easier. And uh, we of course have a Chaos Mesh office hours session books. And I believe all the maintainers will be there to chat with you guys as well. So make sure you sign up for those at the KubeCon page. And we also have been um, thinking of ways to update the Chaos Mesh governance to improve your experience in the Chaos Mesh community. We want to make the rules clearer and responsibility. So um, before it was, um, so uh, before you have to be a contributor or user and then you are a committer and then you become you might become a maintainer. And now we want to streamline this process and make the community experience easier and better. Uh, so we have changed, we are proposing to change the progression path to contributor, which has literally no boundaries. And then we hopefully can invite some members, some contributors to become Chaos Mesh members with, uh, who are long-term participants in our communities. And when you reach a level of understanding of the project and as well as the base architecture, you are able to be nominated to be a committer. And of course, uh, if you are hardcore and have been involved in this community for a really long time, you become a maintainer. And which is why we hope you to comment or leave any suggestions in this PR if you have any. And let's get back to the community updates. And of course, we want to give our new contributors in the past month a quick shout out. Uh, we have, I believe, seven new contributors in the past month. So thank you for your contributions and uh, joining us in our little community that we're building. And um, although we have covered questions earlier in the breaks, uh, if anyone has any questions, you can just simply unmute yourself or ask away. <clears throat> 